Okaidi, welcome back to my channel, Maybe Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be talking about my older fantasy or classic fantasy TBR. Now, this originally was something that I planned to start at the beginning of this year, but life happened and I wasn't able to put this list together as early as I had wanted to. So I've decided to make this a TBR for the rest of the year or the second half of 2023. Something I realized as I talked to different members of the fantasy community is that there's kind of a big hole in my reading history with classic fantasy or fantasy that predated me and my reading years. And I respect the reading opinions of a lot of the people who are mentioning these older uh, fantasy works, and it made me want to see what I thought of them. Obviously, you don't have to have read any specific works to be a fantasy reader. Uh, I really hate that aspect, that gatekeeping aspect of the community, but this is something that I personally want to pursue and see what I think about these books that a lot of people say were instrumental in developing the fantasy genre into what it is today. Now I've amassed quite a list of recommendations and books that kind of fit this criteria. Well, let me at least make the criteria a little more clear. Uh, I don't have a year cutoff for these books. It's basically any books that people reference as a classic work or something that is a cornerstone of the genre, as well as something that predated me uh, in my reading journey. So I guess it's classics in relevance to me and my life. For reference, I'm a millennial, I'm 30 years old, so that might give you kind of a perspective on what I'm looking at as older or classic fantasy. I have a large list of recommendations and books that I was considering to add to this TBR at this point, but I chose six that I wanted to start with, and in theory I'll be reading one of these every month of the year in the second half of the year, but we'll see. It's a bit more flexible, so anytime from putting this video up to the end of the year, I want to read these six books. Since most of these authors have a lot of books that comprise their body of work at, at this point in their career, I decided to pick one main book that was recommended to start with for these authors, and then if I like that author's work, then I'll go back and read a lot of their backlist. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first one that in theory I would read in July of this year, but like I said, maybe read earlier, basically one book that will be read by the end of the year <laughs> is Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett. I have never read Terry Pratchett, but I've heard amazing things about Discworld, and I love that kind of snarky, tongue-in-cheek narration technique that is clearly one of his hallmarks. And I just have a feeling that his books are going to hit right for the reading mood that I'm in in this kind of like season of my reading career. So I've heard that the best book to start with in Discworld is Guards Guards. You can let me know in the comments down below if you have a completely different opinion, but that's the general overall like main recommendation that I see out there. The second book on this list is A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. I have wanted to read Le Guin for years, years and years, and I just never prioritized her work. I have heard some quotes from her and some excerpts from essays that she's written, and it just seems like she's going to match my reading taste really, really well. Uh, so I decided to start with Earthsea by her, but I know she has a, an entire body of work. Again, if you want to add in the comments down below what you think I should start with besides Earthsea, you can make you know an argument for it and see if you can sway me. <laughs> but as of right now, I've decided to start with Earthsea. The next book I'm going to pick up is Dragonflight, which is the first book in the Dragon Riders of Pern series by Anne McCaffrey. This one I had heard of here and there, and I believe it was actually in my library when I was younger, because when I was looking up this series, I saw the older paperback illustrations. I was like, wait a minute, I've seen those before. <laughs> so I kind of had a peripheral awareness of this series, but I never actively you know, thought about picking it up. I don't know much about it, except for that it's quite highly praised, and it seems to be a very quintessential like dragon classic fantasy. 
The fourth book I have here is The Curse of Chalion by Louis McMaster Bujold. I believe I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Uh, this one I've seen recommended by one or two other booktubers that I follow and both of them really enjoyed it. But again, I really don't know much about this book at all except for that it was recommended. Uh, quite often to me actually once I started asking other people who I should read for this challenge. Specifically when we did the page chewing interview with Philip Chase uh, I decided to use that <laughs> that moment to ask him what he would recommend or who he would recommend that I read and the chat went crazy recommending Bujold so I put it on the list after that. The fifth book I have here is Tagana by Guy Gavriel K. Now I think this is the only one on the list that is a standalone. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but I feel like that's pretty rare in fantasy. And I've heard Tagana mentioned for years and years and years. Uh, but it just, it was never explained to me what it's about. <laughs> like I've never heard anyone actually talk about what this book is about, but I've heard people talk about it, if that makes sense. Uh, but I do know that Kay is just a household name when it comes to fantasy, and I'd like to get at least one book under my belt. The last one here is Lord Fowl's Bane by Stephen R. Donaldson. I think this is the first in a series like Thomas Covenant the Unbeliever, Unbeliever I think is the name of the series. And this idea, the one thing I know about this uh, series kind of intrigued me, which is that the main character gets transported to this world, but he doesn't believe he's actually there. So he takes actions that he wouldn't normally take, thinking that there aren't going to have any actual real consequences because he doesn't think he's actually been transported to this world. Which sounds like it would have some really interesting moral implications if the author really chooses to, you know, fully dive into that concept. Um, I haven't heard anyone really talk about this series, but I have heard people recommend and talk about Donaldson, so there's that. Like I've said, I've compiled quite a large list of other authors and recommendations that I've gathered through my research, but I'm always open to adding more people uh, to that list or more, more possibilities to that list because I might want to extend this, you know, reading journey past this year. I don't see why I wouldn't. These are just six names that I chose to start off with. So if you have any other recommendations for me or someone that you really think that I should pick up, please let me know in the comments down below, especially from more diverse backgrounds, authors with more diverse backgrounds, because it's not surprising that a lot of classic older fantasy is like dead old white guys. You know, so if you have more diverse recommendations, I would definitely welcome those in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you know my reading taste and you think that there's going to be one of these that I'm really going to like or one that I'm actually really not going to vibe with that you think, you know, if you know me well, I would love to hear those kinds of predictions down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click that bell. I'd love to have you as part of this community and I appreciate it. But for now, I'm going to head out. Jenny.